explanation based on that. They have to be knowledgeable. They have to have the knowledge of the the law, the nah, meaning that the Arabic language, the roots. You don't just sit down like that, you look at the meaning and then you just woke up and you, you know, you will bring fit. You will bring fit. So if you just see only one thing, that's it. It's like one guy who was Muslim and they said, he said he, he, he became a you non-Muslim know, and that's from that. Because he saw in the Quran, they say, Allah said, I have prepared the Jahannam and the hellfire for the people of Allah. He said, I have prepared the Jahannam and the hellfire for so many people among the mankind in the jinn. And he said, oh, if it is like that, why should I worship Allah? So you see, they don't understand. You have to go further. It's like a way with the Muslim. If you just take a way the Muslim and try to give people a da'wah, you you bring fit you will say way meaning that you know a very you know uh, big or long deep hole in hell fire will be for those who pray so why should i pray then okay so if you just take only one part you will you will mislead people it's the same thing with the saying of the prophet it's like the example of uh, when somebody will just come in front of you telling you that oh, it's not it's haram for you to stand and relieve yourself. It's haram. He will just come to, to you with and put you in head fire. Because he saw you standing relieving yourself. Because he only have one hadith. He doesn't know that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi himself also one time yes, at times. He will stand and relieve himself. You see, so it is all those things. This is when they don't just woke up and they finish eating, like I finish eating, uh, you know, rice. Then I will just come and grab the microphone and say what they might know. They give their commentary based on what they learn from the companions. And the companions are the one Allah make sure that there are good people they surround the Prophet of Allah. That's the reason why they are the one who reported it, the hadith. And to tell you that one day, like uh, those who compiled the hadith, Abu Huraira, uh, uh, like Bukhari and all of them, when they will go to you, even if they see you, you know, driving, you know, how you call it, kind of sexy. Sugar, sugar cake, right? right? Okay, if they see you on the road, you know, if you really need it in on the road, come and say, no, I'm not going to go. Even if you have the hadith, they're not going to take it from you. Bakari and Akhlaq. This is, you know, the man is like, it's, it's like the mercs, the good man. You got it? So it means. If they see you like eating, you know, even on the road, you grab a bar of water and you drink it, and they don't think they're not going to take a, a hadith from you. Because they say that anyone who has a hadith and he's really a practicable hadith, he's not going to act like that. So look at that today. You even have a pool, pool, you, you pull on the road. So Makari and Akhlaq, the good man is. We know, you know, it's, you know, a person is not supposed to. So they, they, they will go one person travel from an area to another area. That takes him like man to get there. When he got there, that man he supposed to go and take hadith, one hadith from him. He saw him trying to call his his horse or his uh, donkey. The donkey refused. But what he does, like he make his hand like there's something. So he took a bucket, you know, trying to. Uh, after that, there is grass inside, so the animal followed him. And this man who traveled to take the hadith from him is watching what he's doing. So he grabbed it, and like, uh, the animal followed him. That's the moment he kept the, uh, the cart and put the rope. Then the man realized that he did not have even a, a, a seed or grass for the animal. It means he has been unjust to the animal. So that man just make you turn. I'm not going to take hadith from somebody who's lying. Can you imagine that? So those people, they really work. This is how they compile the hadith. 
and the commentary they give also Allah protect them they try so we go in over the hadith again one more time the Prophet said Allah the Almighty is good and he is pure in Allah tayyibun alright la yaqbalu illa tayyiba and he is not going to accept except for what for which is good which is pure he is pure, he only accepts the things that are pure. If it is drink, if it is food, it is you know your action, it has to be a pure, it has to be pure, it has to be good. And he said, Allah has commanded the believers, okay, to that which he has commanded also to the, the messengers. So between us and the messengers is the same commandment. He said, Ya ayyuhal rusul Oh you, you messengers Eat of the tayyibat All kind of halal, legal foods Eat from what is pure Alright And perform righteous deeds Wa'amalu salih Righteous? Righteous deeds And he said the one that he said also Oh you, you believe Ya ayyuhal ladhin aman Eat of the lawful things That we have provided you if you see the similarity of this, of those uh, in the of ayat, like Ya ayyuhal rusulu kulu min al-tayyibat, Ya ayyuhal ladhin amanu kulu min al-tayyibat wa razaqana. So it's the same message. The Pope, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give, has given to the uh, messengers, he gave, he is given to the, to the believers. So it is not uh, right for a Muslim, for a believer to go and eat anything that is haram. Alright? Then the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned the man, a man who is in trap, in trap, in a tripping journey, a long journey. It's like if it's a journey, they said that it's a journey in a desert. Where he finds himself, his, his everything is his, like dust. Al Mami. It's dust everywhere. He is, you know, he is already tired. Alright? He said, Summa, he said, Summa, the car of Rotor, then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentioned the man, you play the suffer. His journey is so long, like it is a very, you know, long distance journey. All right? And then, Ash Asa Akbar. All right? Who? Like he is like dust, and you realize that the same clothing has been, you know, wearing. It's long time he still has that, and you realize that the the sign of him being come from long, uh, long place, but he still he still going, he still in trouble. You know something? Go, go, go. Go and ask something. So you feel the suffer Ash'af al-Akbar, uh, he is covered, covered by dust and so on, alright? Yamud yadihi ila sama. Yamud yadihi ila sama, meaning that he raised his head towards the, uh, the what? The sky. And it is a, the, the nature of the human being. Sometimes, if you look around, on your right side, nothing, no help. On your left side, no head. In front of you, nothing. Behind you, nothing. It's only you. You raise your head, head towards your sky, the sky. It's happened to all of us sometimes. You find your situation where there's no, there's no, like no solution. Then you just raise your your head. It doesn't matter. The person is Muslim. They are not Muslim. This is the nature of the human being. Even those who don't believe, sometimes when it is hard, they will say, God. So it's the nature of the human being. He himself you knows that he doesn't come from nothing. Like somebody has created He has his, his own. The one who won't own. Because nothing you will see, you will see, and they will, you know, you're not going to see that somebody made it, except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we cannot see Allah. That's the reason why. Imam Ahmad, 
when the moment they were really trying to find like tell people that the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they always reject reject and he came one day he said I saw a, a boat I saw a boat that is uh, that is floating on the sea but I think the, the boat created itself and they were like oh yeah you know. <laughs> How can you, how can you do that? How can a boat create itself? Just come and float it on the, on the, on the, on the sea. Somebody has to create it. Ah, now you see. So how can you imagine you say that the boat cannot create itself and float on, on the sea? But you think the earth, the world create itself. That's how we can let it come from. They keep quiet. When people don't, don't want to believe, they don't want to believe. Even if you give them the hundred of what? Of science. So may Allah make us the believers. So he, he raised his hand towards the sky. And he was like, Ya Lord, my Lord. Ya Lord, oh my Lord. He meaning he is asking for help. Because his provision, everything is done. He doesn't have anything. And the situation he is, He's supposed to be closer to Allah because he's traveling. A traveler, we say, he's closer, his du'a is accepted. The Prophet said that he did not say that. The one who is traveling, who is traveling, he's close, his, his actions or his du'a is faster to be accepted than your du'a in mind. And the one who is a victim of injustice. Be careful, be careful with you being unjust to somebody. When he says, hmm, Wallahi, I will accept him. It doesn't matter the person is a Muslim, he's not Muslim. He's not Muslim, that's not a problem. Don't be unjust to them. The one who is a victim of injustice. Allah, even Allah's Allah swear in one hadith that even like he will destroy you, you will have to pay for it. If you have you are being unjust to somebody. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter you are the boss. No. Like us, like when we teach children sometimes, if you don't pay attention, you will just go and beat a child or hit a child for no reason. It's hard. And we know that even beating is not It's not right. Huh? It's hard in Islam. You're not supposed to even raise your hand in, in, on animal. The children, we punish them when they are being sometimes. But for no reason, you try to just, because you don't like it. They are not And that's happen, this happens also sometimes here in the massages. You know, we're going far away. It's not because I'm close to you, the other person I don't know, the way I treat you, I, you know, I will just you know, humiliate the, the, the other person. It is haram. It's being unjust. And Allah make it haram. Because he, made, he said he made haram. He made uh, solo. The unjust is haram to himself. He can do whatever he wants, nobody will ask him. Because Allah is not an amaya from the Holy Spirit. Nobody will ask Allah, he's going to ask Allah what he's doing, but he's the one who will ask everybody. But he make it haram, the injustice to himself. And he said he make it haram between you. Do not be unjust to one another. So one of the people who, uh, when we will make it to Allah accept it so fast, is the one who is victim of injustice. Wallahi brother and sister, if you are being victim of injustice, raise your hand. But you have to make sure that you are the victim. Because sometimes a human being takes himself as like the victim, but at the end he is the oppression. That's the reason we have to be careful. You make that dua and come against you, it will come back to you against you. you have to, because the dua that will be accepted. So before you make dua against somebody, you have to make sure That, that person oppresses, really oppresses. And the meaning, you realize that they really mean to oppress you. 
Otherwise, Allah is not going to accept it, and the dua will come back to you against you. Sometimes you see our, you know, sometimes we just struggle with certain things. It's the result of our our, our own actions. So be careful. Yeah. So be careful. When you, when the person is struggling, he is close to Allah. That's the reason why he is Islam. When a person, a person is struggling, when they come to your country, they transit, transit, take care of them. Take care, take care of them. them. Because they are close to Allah. They live, they, they, are, they, are, they, are, they are very in, in fitri, in the taste of Allah. We know how travel is. With the means we have today, but still it's not easy. You have everything, you have the water and so on and so on. Before it was like that. You see people coming, coming to cross the village and they need water. They need water. How are you going to treat them? The good people, it's not only water they will give them, they will give them even food. And they will tell them, oh, where you go? It is going to rain. Stay. You're going to spend in the night, tomorrow morning, you continue your trip. Your trip. This is how our, our, our grandfather, they, they were blessed. They don't have that much money, but what are they raised? Hundreds of people in the house. Look at us today. The moment you just realize that somebody comes and don't tell you that they're coming, you become a fitter. <laughs> so, we are not even, uh, you know, uh, of course, because now also uh, people are not trustworthy. A person will come, you don't even know them. If you leave them, they will destroy your house before you come back. I heard that, that they, you know, in a place, people receive like guests like that, and at the end, when they came, you know, his whole family was, was kicked. He went out to get something. When he came back, you know, the guests killed all the family members. We are not us. So it is like that a person who struggles is close to Allah. That's the reason why our elders, they have that mentality. When a person is struggling, it's not that he's the one who's giving money. They're the one who sometimes collect money and give to them. When they give to them, it's to, for them also to, to have their part of the goodness of that man who's trauma or that sister who's trauma. But today, when a person is trauma, we are the one who are waiting for the person to give us money. Especially the imams. Ah, give me money, I'm going to make a dua for you. An imam, who told you that the, your dua is the one that is accepted? Fear of my imam. Okay, Allah protect us. So he raised his hand, normally Allah will accept. He's supposed to just accept his dua. But the certain things happen to his life that there's no way. And as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Muddi alayhi wa sallam, his food is haram. His food is haram. The food he ate is haram. And maybe the food even he is fed is haram. How it is haram? It is haram. It is either he has food that is not allowed to be eaten. Which is haram. Let's say if he has alcohol, it is haram. If he has pork, it's haram. If he has meat, but it's not slaughtered in the Islamic way, it is haram. And I will come back again to that. Told us, when you want to buy the meat, don't go to the supermarket. Don't get your meat, your chicken, from the supermarket. Go and make sure that the brother who sells halal, you buy them. If you cannot, go to the, you know, where the lady is louder in front of you, a Muslim person will go and slaughter in front of you. Because we, we have discussed about the quality. We have to be careful which thing we put in our, 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 our stomach. Because you put haram in your stomach, Allah is not going to accept your stomach. That's the reason. If you are eating haram, Allah is not going to accept your daughter. Okay, we go there. We must not go haram. His, you know, drinks are also haram. So it is haram in the sense of maybe uh, it is alcohol 
as I said, of the food, maybe it's their alcohol or it's uh, pork, whatever it is. But maybe it is not like that, but he bought the food from the halal shop. Halal people, it is for halal, right? But the money he took to buy the food was in, in halal, in haram. So the food itself becomes haram. I don't know if you got it. Oh, maybe the money he got is not haram with it, but the way he got the, the money, it is haram with it. The food still is haram. So we have to be careful. That's the reason why some people, they don't eat everything. They don't eat it. They don't eat everything. They make sure. But as Muslim, Allah does not ask you that. It's not, I'm sitting down, uh, what's your name? Uh, Fawzi will bring the food, then I will ask him, it is halal? <laughs> it is halal? And you don't do that. Muslim, a Muslim bring food, it's halal already. Just yes, take it and eat. Alright? So, the haram can be also, uh, in the sense, as I said, it is the, the income from what you get it and you buy the food, it is haram. That's the reason why there is a, a girl, a girl, she was like nine years old. When his, her father is going out, she will go and meet him by the door. He said, Fear Allah with us. My dad, Fear Allah with us. He said, What happened? You going outside now. Please, Fear Allah and don't bring anything but my halal. And the, the father was so proud of his, his daughter. He was like, hey, My daughter. If I don't get halal, and you guys are hungry, what can I do? What can I do? It's only haram. She was like, we prefer to be hungry and stay away from haram than eating haram that the day of Qiyamah, Allah will punish us for that. A girl for the nine or nine of you. Look at our wife today. You are sitting there, everybody is getting that, you know, that money. Yeah, you, everything you are too much. Everything you say, halal, haram, haram, look at you. You are with your, you know, your, your brother. You already built a mansion. A very, in a big, big house. You are sitting down there. Our, our even wife, our wives are the one who, even our mama, man are the one who, you know, tell us to go get everything. Not to look at halal or haram. A nine year old, she will always hide when they finish, meet her dad when he is going to work. Fear Allah. Fear Allah. So what happened? <laughs> Get on the haram. So what about if you don't have the haram and say, you're not haram? So no, no, no. We prefer to be patient with haram. You know, stay away from haram than we eat in haram. The door of the will punish that for you. Well, if any haram, a person, you eat it, Allah will punish you here, and the day of the Allah will ask you about it. Unless you will. You repent and Allah will forgive you, then that's it. So we are forgive us. So the Sheikh is saying here, uh, I don't finish the, the hadith. Uh, what he is wearing also is haram. Haram in the sense of maybe he is wearing something that is not supposed to be worn, to be, to be worn, right? As a woman or a, a, a brother. We know that as men, we are not supposed to wear anything that is crowded the, the earth, you know, the, the earth. And so, opposite to the women who are supposed to, to cover the whole body. So a Muslim, if you wear like that, there's no way you're going to raise your hand and Allah will accept it. It is haram also. You are wearing something the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saying, haram. If you are wearing a paint that go below your neck until like it's crowded, the, uh, the earth is not right. So you have to be careful. But here, the way also he bought his clothes is haram way. Meaning that maybe it's a stolen money, or maybe he cheated to get that clothes. So it is haram. So anything, everything on his himself is already haram. What could be haram? And the food he ate, like, it, he has been raised in haram way. All his life, he has been raised in haram way. Meaning that the food and the, the drinks his father is bringing at home, 
that is always haram. Maybe the father is working in a haram place. That's the same money he used to raise to, to, to feed his children. The children will never get baraka. Brothers, you want baraka? If there's a haram, there's no one in baraka. So how can that be? If you, you eat in haram, how can you want, you want baraka? There's no baraka. There's no blessings. So we are not forget that. The Prophet said, all these things are combined on, a, on one person who is raising his hands in the Arab, the Arab. The Prophet said, how and when and where Allah will accept his dua? It means, <laughs> the, the brothers who are married and maybe the sisters. Like there is one eye in the Quran, Allah is saying, Nisa'ukum, harfu lakum. Fatu hafakum, anna Anyone Anyone who heard that is uh, that high? Okay. okay. Nisa'ukum, harfu lakum, fatu hafakum, anna shiftu. So, anna, that's the, the problem of anna, I just got brought the word anna. It means when, where, and in which circumstances Allah will accept his dua. And the, yeah. the ayah I brought is like Allah is saying, oh, your, your wife, okay, your spouse are what? Are like, I, 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 like your farm. So if you want to enter your farm, you can enter when you want, where you want, how you want. It's, it's how Allah gave you, you know, the, the key. So you can understand the meaning of Allah. There's no way how can Allah accept his Torah. Even that person, it, it, let's say that he's in Jesus. That's the reason why it happened like that. Let's say that he's wearing all those clothes and he ate the haram and so on, but he's inside the Kaaba and making Torah, Allah will never accept the Torah. That's the meaning of Allah. He can find himself in Kaaba. The day of the day of Allah will never accept his Torah. He can find himself in that position, in Kaaba. Behind him is space or swaying who is leading. He say, Ami, Ami, Allah is not going to accept the Torah. Oh, 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 did you have Arab Allah? No, Allah is not going to accept it. Until the person repents. The moment you repent and you take out all the halal, you raise your hand and Allah will accept your throat. So for Allah, you see yourself. There's no way Allah will accept How Allah will accept your throat. That's the question. How and when? And in which circumstances Allah will accept your throat? With these haram he has, you have not eaten haram. You are, your clothes is haram. You yourself you have been raised since you were married till you become a person haram. How Allah will accept your Torah? Look at us today. Sometimes you have the answer of our situation. You will go to one imam, they make dua. Another imam, they make dua. You go to Kaaba, you cry, and so on. It's still the same thing. You have to look and watch what you did. You have to look and watch what you drink. You have to look and always watch what, what you dress. All this is, 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 is these are the things that can even uh, stop, you know, stop Allah from, from looking at you in a blessed way. So we are about to The Sheikh is saying, في هذا الحديث وصف جل جل وصف الله في جل جل وعلى بأنه طيب. الشيخ يسير وين عبد الله صلى الله عليه وسلم سيد ستر لي على إزواج على إزواج طيب على إزواج بيو بود لا يقبل إلا طيب يعني إذا أسبت لي نتين أسبت وات إسبيو. It is me like the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he how Allah is how Allah is in his إلى ما نبي في سنة هي سنة جاسية what perfect is perfection when you talk about Allah is all about perfection it doesn't matter from what his name his action and how he attributed is all perfection you're not gonna see anything that we do a human being you can see something that is good but other thing is in between you know so that man I want he has money, but he's so arrogant. This is how you see it sometimes. Oh, I see that man. Ah, he's good looking, but he's poor. 
I see that many are with you, but he's like, he's like that. Oh, that's just so beautiful. Uh, but it's this, this. We always have bad parts. With Allah, we don't have. Oh, this guy is nice. But if they have, it's always like that. You will always have something to say. But Allah cannot, cannot uh, change anything. He's perfection himself. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, so, you know, in the beginning, that's what he's saying. Uh, there's no time. When they say time, is any uh, anything that we will do is his quality, his perfection. Um, the same thing also Allah is for you. And he's not accepting anything except what is for you. It's not only ashes. And it's not only food. Food you eat it for yourself unless you eat it in a sense of you waking up or you want to really be strong in your intention. When you eat food, it's halal. But the moment you start having good intention, I want to eat so that I can stand or I can be strong and read for all, you have, you have reward because of your food. But if you just eat because you want to eat, yeah, there's no reward. There's no reward for it. It's something that's good for you. <laughs> I don't even understand. No, I just like it. I just want to, I want to eat it. Okay, you eat it. You're not going to get any reward. That's it. It becomes, you know, the bad, you know, the, the bad one will take care of that. That's the what you want to have. So, but if you are eating because you want to be really strong, you have that intention. And when you finish, this is how when you have that intention, when you finish, you really take out. And you think about those people who want to eat but they don't have. And I give you beauty. So my those are amazing. And in the name. And I will ask you about it. I want the name. And if you remember there was one hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, one of the ni'ma Allah will ask a human being the door of Qiyamah, you believe in the door of Qiyamah, is that uh, Allah will ask him, didn't I give you war, a very good war of you, you know, uh, killing your, your, your test? And look at us, we have any kind of trick in our village. How the cold war you think? Some people didn't even say that. They say, ha, so good. Yeah. It's not a, it's not a, it's, you know, you know the, the, the correct behavior of the person. And most of the anything you touch should be, you earn a benefit, you have benefit from it. Meaning that the benefit of Allah, we don't talk about it, they don't You take it, he says, some people look for this kind of water, you don't get it. Be careful. Sometimes we think like this is easy. The cold water we have, sometimes we don't even want to drink cold water because it will harm our heart or something like that. Wallahi, you go to certain places we came from, it's so hot that they even look, 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 look for something that is it's not even very, very and they're cold. Because yeah. everything they touch is always cold. And they don't even have fridge in their houses. Sometimes you see a whole village, you know, there's no fridge. A whole village. A whole village, there's no fridge. So, so how do you think when it is hard? Do you think they will have? We grow up, we don't have a fridge. The, our mother, they have to put the calibers, the, the thing next to the tree. That has so many uh, leaves, okay? okay? So that you, you they put water there, they, they cover a, a rock, a big rock, so that nobody will open. It stays for a while, then it becomes a little bit cold. This is how when you come back from the farm, they give you water. Hey, drink one cup only, and you drink one cup. Ah, you so hot. Can you imagine? But do not look at that stuff. And we don't, we complain. We are the one who complain more than this before. What do I want? What do I want? What do I want? Sometimes when, when me, I read certain ayahs, and I see our situation, I got scared. Because Allah said, I think the Imam did that ayah today, if I remember. فَلَمَّا نَسُوا مَا ذُكِرُوا بِهِ فَتَحْنَا عَلَيْهِ الْأَوَابِ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ When people neglect, and they run away, and they not uh, take it, the lesson or the reminder from the Quran, the Sunnah, Normally, people don't listen. Allah punished them. But you know what Allah do? He opened the door of blessings everywhere they have. 
and the uh, the dumb among them they will think, oh, we are blessed, we have not got it. But the one who are smart and wise, they know that this is not a blessing. Because if you are committing sins and you still have in this dunya what you want, be careful. I don't know if you understand what I mean. If you are going against the law of God, you realize that this time you really don't do it on time, you don't you respect the law of Allah, a lot of sins, but you still your affairs are still going smoothly. You have money everywhere, everything is going good for a dunya. Well, I be careful, it's a good sign. This is called istidraj. Sanastadirajuhum min haysu la ya'alamu. Ibn Kaiji. May Allah protect us for that. This is when people forget what we have been giving to them. The reminder, we open the door of blessings for them. They have everything. And they will enjoy it. The wicked people are one that they think it is a blessing because as also when we see a person with uh, his own, but he is in, he doesn't pray, he doesn't do anything, we think oh, he's blessed. Well, he's blessed. And we say that, we say, if you say sometimes, we say, well, why? We think this is a blessing. Anything you have that will take you away from Allah, Allah is not a blessing. It is a curse. But also we have to understand the meaning of our, our life in this world. If you have a, a good job, a very perfect good job, you used to pray on time, but because of that job, you cannot pray on time now, but you have everything, money, everything, you need money. But money is not mandatory as like you pray on time. And the, 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 the moment you start having that, and you are not, you are careful, careless, you have to be careful. I don't know if you understand. I have a car, right? Before I had a car, before I don't have it, I don't used to have a car. I used my metro car only. I would just come on time and pray. But the moment I had a car, I would drive. The moment I went to the bus gate, sometimes I turn around. The time I find, I find the parking, they already say salam alaikum. The time I can, everybody is going out. If it's happened one, two, three, I have to be careful. That car is not good, good, good for me. It's just the lowest example I can give you. That, that, that car is not good for me because I used to pray on time. Now I, that I have a car, if a person sees me with a nice car, he will say, Oh, mashallah, you are blessed. It's a hard one to say, But we don't know that it's not a blessing because it, it, it stopped me from being close to Allah. It, it started taking me away from Allah. It's not a blessing. It is istithra. If you don't pay attention, Allah says, It's like you want to catch a fish, the thing you put. You, the, the fish, when they start eating, they think, oh, I have it. Oh, he's dumb, he give me that, that food, I'm eating it freely. They don't know that something is there. That will, that will catch them. It's the same thing for the, 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 the rat. When you put a trap, they have the, 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 the fish, they think, oh, we can't get They have their fish, we will go and eat it. No, you're not going to eat anything. It will catch them. It's the same thing. And when we want to catch a back when we want to catch a, a, a chicken to maybe to Salata because somebody comes from back uh, somewhere he is from you have to that's how our our father has been doing. Like if somebody comes, they will take one uh, chicken or when there is a goat, one goat, then salata in just one hour everything is uh, it's already ready, they give to the uh, to the traveler. That's the reason why sometimes we pray that a traveler has to come because you don't eat meat unless they really come. <laughs> Our children they have chicken here, they eat in Twitter with So, when you, when you see, see stuff like that, that, be careful. When you see a lot of blessings, be careful. And you still committing these things, be careful. It can be a trap. Allah wants you to drown yourself in that thing. Then the day he will catch you, faith that will be so. You will regret what you have done. And there's no you to it. So we are the protectors. It is a good sign if you commit something, okay? Then when you walk or when you are doing something, then Adam will just, he's not going to give it to you. 
one tabi they said that he was walking and then he just saw a Yahudi, a Jewish woman who was passing and then he looked at her. That he looked at her in a sense of a man and woman. So the thing is that the woman, he just realized, oh, why am I looking? He just started go, you know, walking and then his head, his head uh, hit the wall and he started breathing. They told him to wipe over his, his, his blood, he said, no, this is the punishment. I just got because I, I committed a sin. Can you imagine people, how people who think? Sometimes we, we, don't, we don't protect, we are sinful, that we want Allah to give us everything. If Allah gives us in that such circumstances, you think Allah loves you? Well, Allah doesn't love you. I don't know if you understand. You are in sinful, you don't pray on time and so on and so on. Riba, you are there and so on. And you want Allah to give you tranquility in this life. No. Allah wants you to be in struggle so that you can realize, oh, I'm angry. It's because of this or because of this. Then you leave it, you come back. This is what Allah wants you. Want from you. So we have to be careful. A human being, a Muslim who continuously commits sins and they still have their affairs going on, is not good sign. But if you have that moment, when you come in, Allah punish you, you are the good one. Allah wants good, 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 goodness from you. Allah wants goodness, come back here, only one. Allah wants goodness, goodness for you. So we are protect this. It's like it's like uh, it's like two two people who are fighting. Then when you just come, they all both are your friend. I give that you know, example like somebody who has two wives. All right, they have you have two wives. They are fighting. But when you just come, let's say you have uh, I'm not going to give the name of uh, any sister who is here <laughs> to be in trouble. Uh, let me see. Umu, you have Umu, okay? Then you have Rotaya. Hunak Rotaya? What? Umu? Hunak Umu? Okay. So you have your wife, what? Your wife, two wives, they are fighting. Umu and Rotaya. The moment you get there, you are like, oh, Rotaya, stop. Don't do that. And you just grab only Rotaya. Do you think Umu, umu will leave you alone? No. no. It looks like, ah, so your preference is only Rukhaya. Umu will fight it. It's the same thing with our Lord. Some people, you don't care about, you only care about the one you care about the most. Some people, they already, Kabrimon. They say Kabrimon and Kabrimon, they put it, right? Hey, uh, hey, hey. A dead God doesn't have, you know, will never be scared of what? Of a, a knife, right? That's how they say it. So, you don't care that Allah doesn't care about certain things. He just wants to destroy them. But you, if you do it, He will just punish you. It's like when you were, when you're going to school, some people, you are friends with a, uh, a professor. When you get eight out of ten, He got one. But some people have two. And He never said anything. About them, you have hate, but he's still mad at you. He wants you to have hate. He's still, he's, he's, our relationship with Allah is like that. You, when you commit sin a little bit, he will punish you. Other people, they keep committing, committing, and he's arranging their affairs. Don't think Allah loves them more than you. I don't know if you understand. Inshallah. It's clear, right? And I will give another example. People will go to the Marabu. And they will ask for something, then it will happen. Like, 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 like the the guy, the one who is doing magic, he will do stuff, and then they will come there. The business is what? But you, you will go. They will tell you the biggest, the biggest one. You will go there, but still it doesn't work. But if you don't know, you will come. To, ah, I'm unlucky. I am unlucky. Everywhere they take me, it doesn't work. You should be, you should be, you should be, thank Allah because Allah loves you. Because these people, when they went there and then it's work, they don't have anybody in their head. It's that, that magician. It's all, oh, go to Shiv, go to Shiv. They will never tell you, go to Allah. But you, when you go and it doesn't work, Allah wants you to come back to Him. 
then you don't have anything else except Allah. So this is the law of Allah. We don't understand it, but this is how it is. You commit something, Allah will hold his blessing from you. It is, it is good for you. But you can keep committing, then the, the blessings are open. Be careful. Be careful. So this is how it is. We have a... Uh, one day Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, the same thing also with your singing. Anything that will come from your mouth, from your mouth, your tongue, you should control it. Know that Allah will judge you for everything you will say. Every word you will pronounce, Allah will, 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 will judge your mind. When you say, Ilayhi Yasu wa ta'ala wa ta'ala wa ta'ala wa ta'ala wa ta'ala wa it is to him, okay, to him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the kalimat of tayyib, a good speech, a good word will reach him. And then, then the, the, the good, uh, a good action also. And he will, he will increase it and he will take it and, you know, make him, uh, give you right, the door of tayyib. The same way also when you say something that is bad, it will put you down. How many people in this world just wear them like because they say something, they still in jail. How many people we know? Because of what they say something? So we have to control our tongue. A human being should do always, I always bring it. We know someone to always talk because we want to talk. Before you talk, you open your mouth, make sure that what I'm saying, I will say it in front of us. Make sure that, you know, you looking for reward. Because we are not here to play. Sometimes we, we even, you know, lose our energy in useless stuff. And then we don't even have time for what is going to get us close to our subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we are not this. And as we said, فهو لا يقبل القلام الطيب القلام إلا القلام الطيب والعمل الطيب ولا يقبل من الصدقات إلا ما كان من كسب طيب. The same thing also, Allah is not going to accept anything you give for short charity. It doesn't matter you want to you take it to to Hajj. Allah is not going to accept anything. If you take haram money to go to Hajj, it is your play that 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 went for business is not you. You not get anything. The reason why a person take haram money to go to Hajj is not considered like a Hajj. When they, they repent and they want to work, they have an uh, uh, opportunity, they have haram money, they have to go back. Because that Hajj wasn't the Hajj. The same thing also when you give Sadaqah. And you take haram, some people think you will, they will go and, go and do gambling. When they have money, they will wave it, massage it. No? It's not going to benefit you. Gambling money will never benefit you, even if you work, you, you, you build another car. It's not going to benefit you. We are about to pass. I'm going to call it the Okay. Here, when Allah has made the people of the world, they will be able to do the same thing. They will be able to do the same thing. They will be able to do the when we heard the hadith also, we realized that the messengers, they don't do what they want. The same way also Allah commanded them. There are certain things Allah make them haram, there are certain things Allah make them halal. You do it. That's the reason why when our mothers, Sophia and Aisha, according to certain the narration, they deployed and tried to make the Prophet feel bad about what he's drinking or he's eating in the in the room of uh, the other woman, the other you know uh, wife, or one of one of my or mother, he make haram what is haram. The Prophet said himself he just said if I will drink uh honey then it will cause me my wife are running away from me so I will make a honey haram from myself. Then Allah just said, how can you make haram something that is haram? Alright? So, the prophets also, they have their limit. They are not saying anything halal in their, from their, their, their nafs, from their soul, or from their, uh, their person, personality. No, they are saying it according to what Allah asked them to say. Alright? And the same thing also is halal, is Allah also who asked them to, to declare that it is halal. So they are not supposed to just sit down like that. That's the reason if today somebody told you, don't pray, 
I give you is not you are not mandatory, you are exempt from prayer, and you accept it, that's your problem. He will tell you, don't fast. I fast on your behalf, and you stay, that's your problem. Use your mind. Alright, everything is what is clear. The Prophet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not be able to do it. The Prophet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not be able to do it. The Prophet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not be able فهم أمرون من يكون من كيف من كبر الله جل وعلا لأنهم كلهم عباده فلا يسيقون وبيقوه. so all these people or all the prophets we know like Allah command them the same way the command men also go too fast and accept any command that is specific for them for one of them. ميا لا نكاس بس على سات. قال أمر المؤمنين بما أمر به من سليم ثم ذكر الشاهد على النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يا أيها الرسول so here uh, we're going to okay we're going to just talk about uh, we have a uh, five more minutes or three more minutes uh, the, 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 the hadith, the importance and the, the lessons we will take from this hadith, uh, one is that to realize that all of us, Allah command us. And the second one is that في الحديث دليل على إباحة الطيبات وهي المباحات والمستدلات التي أباحها الله سبحانه وتعالى. There is in this world Allah give us what is halal. Nobody will come and tell you that to you for you to dress good like Sheikh Hassan dress, you tell him it is haram. No. As soon as he is dressed good, Alhamdulillah, we are allowed to to dress. Because some people they think because of iman they don't take shower. They don't, they, don't, they don't wear anything that is nice. They think this is in there. No, 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 this is not halal. This is not what is Islam is. Okay? Islam is not about, you know, it's all about, you know, uh, being clean. Alright? Being clean and nice stuff. We supposed to. Kul man harra mazinat Allah ladhi akhraj min ibadhi wa tayyibadhi wa Who is that person who will come and make haram? The zeal. The, you know, beautiful stuff that I have make haram for people. So we are allowed to do it. What is not? What is this like? The majority of the scholars are saying this like, when you make it like a priority, always it is just that. If you don't get it, no. It's, it's, when you want to take this, so dressing is halal, is haram, they will start asking you like that. No, but you don't have to drown yourself in that because it's not the most important thing. You guys, so can I have a little bit of time? I'm going to start with a walkani. I'm going to do my sana. Walkani, I'm going to do my walkani. 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 I'm going to do my about the worship of Allah, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the way our mother explained to them they were like, ah, if he's, he is the Prophet and he is doing all those kind of worship what are, what, what, is, what are we doing? then they hear this, someone was like me, I'm going to just ask the whole year the other one was like, no, I'm going to spend the night, I'm not going to get married then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he heard about them and he was like who are those people who are saying this? You are the one who are saying this, 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 this. Me, I am the one who fear Allah more than you guys. But I, I sleep and then I woke up at night. I fa I'm fasting and then I pray. I'm not gonna. I'm don't do. I don't do everything. And I marry wives, women. That's what he says. I marry women. From Arabic and Sunnati, Anyone who who rejected my Sunnah, he is not a man. Uh, my own. Anyone of you who reject my son, is going to run by my own. It's not because of uh, uh, night prayer you're going to kill yourself. You don't sleep till like, you become like you know, the wind will take you away. Or you start fasting. Or you say, oh, me, I'm not going to marry. You know, I want to just focus on my team. I don't want you know, marriage. No. 
You are the greater than you, you are like and something the Prophet make halal for the you know, This Islam make halal. That's the way we have to be careful sometimes. So uh, the end, فَإِذَا السَّلِمْ دَلِيلُ عَلَى أَنَّ الدُّعَى لَا يَهُمَ الْإِلَّا إِذَا تَوْفَرَتْ فِي الدَّاعِ أَسْبَابَ الْجَادِ You know that it's not any, any du'a you will ask, then Allah will accept it, your du'a. Or anybody who will stand and then Allah will accept the du'a. You have to really make sure that those things that will stop Allah from us, uh, accepting your du'a, you have to stay away from it. That's the, uh, the thing we are getting here. It means, it doesn't matter you take a lot of money and you gather them to the, the Imams in a place to read the Quran. That will bring you uh, barba. You know, if you know, if they, those imams, they eat haram only. They talk about haram. What they dress is haram. <laughs> How can Allah accept your Torah? And you yourself, the money every day you give to them is from haram. So we have to watch what we eat, what we dress, from where we get our money, and also what we are saying, our tongue. So we are protect all of us. So one of the things that uh, prevent us, uh, that stop Allah from accepting our dua is also the sins. When we are sinful and we don't, we don't, uh, we don't repent, Allah will just not accept the dua. The dalil is the time of the move of Sayyidina Musa. They went outside to make dua for, for the rain. But they make dua, they make dua, till Allah revealed to Musa that you are going to make, continuously make this dua, I'm not going to accept the dua. Why? There's one of you guys, one of the men who are assisting the dua, who commits something, he's not repenting. Then Musa said, okay, who is that man? And so on, he started yelling. That man immediately repented. Then the real self said, Musa was like, Allah, I don't see that man. He said, no, he repented immediately. So reveal it to me, it's not your problem. See, so when a person is committing sins, there's no way Allah will accept the Torah. May Allah forgive all of us. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi wa shabbat wa yamani wa hamad. Safir al-Qutub al-Qishara. Next week we will go to the next hadith. Salaam alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.